Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Ninja Foodie Grill. With this unit, you can grill, air crisp, roast, bake, and dehydrate foods. I'll show you how I grill lamb, chicken, onions, air crisp french fries, and bake a peach crisp. So you can see how the different functions work. It measures 11 inches tall, 14 inches wide, and 17 inches deep. It weighs a little over 16 pounds. The cord length is 3 feet. It's black and silver and is 1,760 watts. Parts of the unit that touch food are BPA free. It comes with a ceramic coated crisper basket, ceramic coated cooking pot, and ceramic coated grill grate. This is the heating element on the hood. Here's the splatter shield that you have to attach during cooking. There's a slot here and the tab on the shield has to go into the slot. Pull this part up and push the shield in. Attaches when you're cooking. This shield keeps the heating element clean and prevents smoking. To remove it for cleaning, just lift up this tab with one hand and pull this out. The grill grate measures 10 inches by 10 inches, so it can hold a decent amount of food. The crisper basket holds four quarts, and the cooking pot holds six quarts. A cleaning brush is also included. When you first get the unit, wash the pot, crisper basket, splatter shield, and grill grate in warm soapy water and dry. They're also dishwasher safe. The outside of the unit can be wiped down with a damp cloth and dried. This is the air intake vent. The air outlet is in the back. Don't block them during cooking. Plug in the unit. This is the on button. With grilling, there are four different temperatures, low, medium, high, and max. And you have four options here, air crisp, dehydrate, roast, and bake. Choose your temperature using the up and down arrows here, and choose the time you want to cook using the up and down arrows here. After you choose the temperature and time, just press start to start cooking. With air crisp, the default temperature is 390 degrees Fahrenheit. You can go up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or down to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. With roast, the default is 375 degrees Fahrenheit. You can go up to 500 degrees or down to 250 degrees. For bake, the default is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You can go up to 400 degrees or down to 250 degrees. For dehydrate, the default temperature is 150 degrees. You can go down to 105 degrees or up to 195 degrees. An instruction guide is included, a recipe book. There are charts with the type of food, amount, cooking time, and temperatures for the grill, air crisp, and dehydrate. You can cook fresh meat and frozen meat, seafood, veggie burgers in this unit. 15 recipes are included. There are marinades, fish, Nashville hot fried chicken, which looks really good, pizza, vegetables, and dessert. The quick start guide is great if you don't want to read the manual. It covers pretty much everything. There's a list of common foods and cooking time and temperature, and info on the different grill functions. Also tips and tricks in the back, as well as cleaning instructions. There are also pictures, so it's very easy to follow. There is a label on the hood with some grill tips, air crisp tips, time, and temperature for popular foods. To use the grill function, put the cooking pot in first. You can see there's a little button back here, and there's an indent on the back of the pot. Just put the indent towards the back. So you put the pot in, and the grill grate with the handles facing up. The grill grate also has a little curve in the back that fits around this indent. The splatter shield should be attached. Close the hood. Heat the unit up for a few minutes first before putting your food on. That's for using any function except dehydrate. It's already powered on. When you choose grill, the default is high and 500 degrees Fahrenheit. If you press it again, it'll go to max 510 degrees Fahrenheit. Low is 400 degrees Fahrenheit and medium is 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's say you want to choose high, press start. It'll start heating and you'll see a progress bar here. Once the progress bar goes all the way to the end, add food will be displayed. Then you can just open the hood and put your food on. After you add the food, you close the grill and the timer will start to count down. 
You can set the time for up to 30 minutes. The default temperature for grilling on high is 10 minutes, so if you don't set the time, it'll automatically go for 10 minutes. While cooking, you can open the hood at any time to check on your food, and the timer will pause. When you close the hood, the timer is going to resume. If you want to air crisp, put the pot in, put the splatter shield in, put the crisper basket in, choose air crisp, press start, and it'll also heat up. When you use the grill function, the unit takes about 8 minutes to heat up before you can put the food on. When you use the air crisp function, the unit will take about 3 minutes to heat. When using the air crisp function, you can set the time for up to 1 hour. Now with any function, if you don't want the unit to heat up first, you can just press the function twice. Starting to heat up, just press air crisp again and it'll just say add food. So you don't have to wait for the unit to heat up. It is a good idea to heat up the unit before putting your food in. Just like with a standard oven, you don't usually put food into a cold oven. You do heat it up for a few minutes. So I would always recommend heating up the unit before putting the food in. If you want to use the roast function, put in just the cooking pot. You can add food directly to the pot. Press roast and it'll heat up for about three minutes. The timer can be set up to four hours. With the bake function, use just the pot. You can also use your own oven safe baking dish in the pot. The timer can be set up to four hours. Heating is also the same, about three minutes. With dehydrate, put the pot in, put the food that you want to dehydrate on the bottom, put the crisper basket in, another layer of food, close the hood, and then you can dehydrate. You can set the timer for up to 12 hours. With this unit, it's best to use oils with a higher smoke point, like canola or vegetable oil, instead of olive oil to prevent smoking. Between cooking batches of food, it's always best to empty out any grease in the pot. You can wipe it out or wash it out. I'm gonna grill some marinated chicken. I have the cooking pot in the unit. We'll put the grill grate in. The splatter shield is already in. Close the hood. Turn the unit on. I want to grill the chicken on high. High is the default, so it's lit up. 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And just press start to heat up the grill. I've marinated some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. After about eight minutes, now the food is displayed. Open the hood. There are two handles here, and they don't get hot. I was able to fit six boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Close the hood. And the timer counts down. The default for grilling on high is 10 minutes. It's been five minutes. I'm going to flip the chicken. Most meat you should flip halfway through cooking. There are some grill marks on the chicken. You don't have to flip burgers, bacon, some fish and some vegetables. The grill chart will tell you which foods to flip and which foods you don't have to flip. When the time's up, the unit beeps and you'll see end displayed on the screen. Use silicone tip tongs if you can. You don't want to scratch the surface. Now we can take the chicken off with our clean tongs. Leave the hood open so the unit cools faster and then you can clean up when all the parts are cooled. The grill grate has grease on it and there's also grease on the bottom of the pot. So everything can be wiped down and then washed in warm soapy water or in your dishwasher. The splatter shield will also have grease on it. If it's not too much, you could just wipe it down with a paper towel and um, use it again if you're cooking another batch of food. If it's really heavy with grease, I'd wash it and dry it before using again. The black parts of the unit are warm. They're not too hot, so you're not going to burn yourself. You definitely don't want to touch the steel wrap because it is hot. 
The chicken's cooked perfectly, so it takes 10 minutes to cook boneless, skinless chicken thighs. It's very tasty, and if you want the recipe, I'll put a link right below this video. And it does taste like something that you would have made on a grill. Crispiness on some of the little parts, just as you would if you cooked it on an outdoor grill. And you do get some grill marks. Of course, getting grill marks means that your meat or vegetable, whatever you're cooking, has to lay flat on the grate. Let's grill some lamb chops. The pot is in and the grill is in grill. It's already on high, which is what I want for the lamb. And we'll press start to heat. It sounds like a loud fan. Tip it about six. It's been five minutes. I'm going to check the lamb. We've got nice color on one side. I'll cook them for a few more minutes on the other side. It's been nine minutes. They look really good. I'm going to take them out. These chops are thin, so they don't need to cook too long. Let's turn the unit off. You see there are some grill marks on the chops. And the amount of time you cook the lamb depends on how well you want it cooked. Cut into one. You can see it's nice and juicy. I marinated these lamb chops last night and it tastes really good. It tastes like grilled meat. So that took about nine minutes. There is a lot of grease in the pot from the lamb. Clean this out and dry it before cooking something else. I wiped all the grease off of the grill and washed it in warm soapy water. If you get stuck on food on any of the parts, just soak it in hot soapy water for a couple of hours or overnight. You can also use the grill brush to clean. There is grease on the filter, so you do want to clean this before cooking another batch of food. I want to grill some onions to go with the meat. I've cut the onions into about a half inch thick slices. Rub them with canola oil on both sides. I'll season them with salt and ground black pepper. When you're grilling fruits and vegetables, it's best to use max. That's 510 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll set the time to four minutes. I grill the onions for four minutes on one side, flip them over and cook them for another two minutes. The onions have some grill marks and they cook pretty quickly. This is about one and a half pounds of russet potatoes that I've peeled and cut up. About half inch thick slices. They've been soaking in water for half an hour. I'll drain them and pat them dry. After patting the potatoes dry, I'll coat them in a tablespoon of oil. Now when you air fry, you don't have to soak the potatoes first, but I find that soaking gives the fries a better texture. If you don't add any oil, the fries will have a dry, crinkly outside and it's not very pleasant. They taste more like standard french fries if you put a little bit of oil on them. Press air crisp. 390 is the default temperature and that's what you want to use for french fries. And I'll set the time to 22 minutes. tablespoon of canola oil. Toss the fries with the oil. The unit's finished heating up. That took about three minutes. Even them out. We'll open the hood and toss them halfway through cooking. It's been 11 minutes. I'll open the hood. You can see the outside edges are brown. a total of 17 minutes. You could see they're all golden brown. Not a good idea to cook it more than this because they'll burn and the potatoes are cooked. Transfer them to a plate. Put some salt on them. 
They're similar to most air fried french fries. Just like fries made in most other air fryers, they're not going to be completely even and golden brown. There's going to be some that are more white. Most of these are golden brown and they taste pretty good for french fries made with just a tablespoon of oil. And 17 minutes is pretty fast for air fried french fries. The best part is there's hardly any cleanup. There's no oil to wipe up. Just let the pot and basket cool and you can rinse them in warm soapy water and dry. When I'm finished eating these, I'll bake you a peach crisp. When you're baking, you can bake directly in the pot. If you want to use your own oven safe baking dish, an eight inch cake pan will fit. A square eight inch pan is not gonna fit. If you want to use a loaf pan, this loaf pan is a little bit less than eight inches and that will fit. A standard loaf pan is about nine and a half inches and that's not gonna fit in the pot. Again, you don't have to use your own pan. You can bake whatever you want directly in the pot. A neighbor of mine gave me a bag of peaches and this is perfect recipe to use up these peaches. I've sliced the fresh peaches, put a little sugar in there, a little ground cinnamon, Put it into my pan. I'm using an eight inch cake pan. For the topping, I'm just using some flour, butter, brown sugar. Put the topping over the peaches. Even out the topping. And once the oven's heated, it's ready to go in. The pot is in the unit. I'll choose bake. And set it to 360 for 25 minutes. It took just three minutes to heat up a lot quicker than your standard oven. Remember the pot is hot. Make sure to use oven mitts to avoid touching the hot pot. I think it might be easier with the bake option not to preheat. Put the pan in the beginning, close the hood, and just bake it. By the way, if you want to make a smaller amount of a crisp, these type of corningware dishes are perfect. They're good for two generous servings. I turned the temperature down to 350 because after just a few minutes I can already smell the topping and I don't want it to burn. The unit does run very hot. There's about three and a half minutes left. The crisp is golden brown. And you can see the peach juice is bubbling. So I'm going to turn the unit off. It's really hot. The crisp needs to cool down anyway before you eat it. I'll leave the hood open and just leave the pan in the pot for a few minutes. The smell of the butter and sugar will drive you crazy. I want to eat this right now, but it's best to let it cool for at least a few minutes. With a regular oven, this crisp would have taken about 10-15 minutes longer to cook. So you saw how this ninja performed on the lamb, the chicken, onions, french fries, and peach crisp. I like that the grill is a decent size. It's not too small, so you can cook meat and vegetables for a family of four. You saw how many chicken thighs and lamb chops I could fit on this grill. Everything I cooked was done pretty quickly. The preheating time was also fast. Cleanup isn't difficult as the accessories are coated. The splatter shield might get a little grimy over time, and if there is any buildup, you can soak it in hot water and soap overnight, and use the included brush to clean it.